Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. So this is part five of our image segmentation using UNet series and until now we put together a uh, UNet model in Keras, I mean in Python using Keras. And uh, also we understood, you know, a little bit about the callbacks, tensorboard and uh, uh, check pointer. And we actually also did model.fit. In fact, if I go back uh, to the code, you can actually see where we left it off in the last tutorial. So we just defined model.fit and we uh, did validation split, batch size, number of epochs as 25. Of course, we are trying to do early stopping with a patience of two. Again, I talked about this in the last tutorial. So in this tutorial, let's actually get our data. I mean, here we just put placeholders X and Y but we need to read in the images and uh, of course define what our X is and Y is. This is the uh, data that we are going to use for training and of course for prediction. Okay, so first of all, the problem we are trying to solve is uh, again defined here. If you look at 2018 data science bowl, this is where you can find the very, I mean, great data set that has uh, a whole bunch of images of nuclei. And you can, uh, again, we are trying to build the code to count these nuclei. Okay, first to train it, and then, of course, to segment this nuclei. So uh, when you download this from here, from, uh, again, kaggle.com, uh, just uh, search for 2018 Data Science Bowl, and uh, sign up, download this data set, and when you unpack it, it kind of looks like, uh, looks like this, of course, without the Python files. So you'll have uh, stage one test, stage one train, okay? I unzipped these test and train. So if you just look at the stage one uh, test folder, it has, uh, I don't like the way they kind of presented this data, but again, it is what it is. So each image has some unique uh, file name over there, folder name, I should say. And the image itself uh, uh, resides within that folder inside another folder called images with the same name as the parent folder name, okay? So here is an image, and this is a test data set, okay? This is not for training. So again, let's go back. Uh, randomly select another uh, folder down here. So it has some weird name, 17B something, something, something there. I double click, go in. Within that, I have a folder called images, and inside the images, there should there is only single image that's sitting, okay? And as you can see, some images are color, some images are black and white, so there are different types of images, or I should say grayscale, not black and white, but so when I open this, you can see this is another grayscale image where you have uh, some cells uh, spread over. Now, this is a stage one test. If I actually go to stage one train, this is the data set we're gonna use for training, okay? Very similar structure, okay? So you have all these weird file names here or folder names, and inside a given folder, uh, now we have two subfolders, one images and the other one masks, obviously corresponding masks for that image. Okay, so if I open images, it's got an image with the same name as the parent folder name. And this is the file name. I believe these are all PNG files. Yeah, there you go. That's a PNG file. And again, some are these color images, some are the grayscale images. But if you go to masks, oh, sorry, let me go back to the masks. This is where I really don't like the way it's presented. Instead of having one image with all the pixels, uh, now we have a whole bunch of images uh, and each image showing one single cell that's actually labeled, okay? This basically means we have to do some extra work later on to put all of these masks together to create one single mask uh, that has all of these pixels, okay? Let's open another one uh, randomly. Let's just pick something over there. Again, images and our image looks like this, a whole bunch of uh, cells, as you can see. And if I go back and, oh God, sorry, go back to the masks folder. Now you can see again, 369 images, each image showing one single cell. Okay, apparently there are 369 uh, cells within that uh, individual image. So this is how the data looks like, okay? So now let's get back to the parent folder. So we have stage one test, stage one train. 
So now let's get back to the code and start uh, coding this. Step one again, because we are trying to, uh, our input uh, layer takes in 128 by 128 by three images. The first step we need to do is uh, resize all of the images into 128 by 128 size. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started. First, by adding the relevant library. So I'm going to use OS to walk through the folders and uh, read the file names and uh, so on. So let's import OS for now. Okay, so now I'm going to define my uh, training path. And my training path is going to be, where is my training images? It's stage one underscore train, right? So this is my training path. And my test path, or uh, yeah, let's just call it test path equals to, again, stage one underscore test and slash. So these are my training and testing paths okay and once I have that the next step is uh, now let's go to again I'm, I'm thinking out loud now let's actually read all the uh, IDs okay for my uh, for example test images and then we can do the same for the training images okay so uh, to do that again let's actually uh, do my training IDs or nothing but uh, let's walk through the folder and this is os dot walk okay through which one through our train path okay so when you do os dot walk train path it's going to give the folder name so the folder name is going to be I mean the root uh, uh, name is going to be stage one underscore train for example for the first one it's go going to be page one underscore train and then this long name okay so because it's going to be like the first and the second so by the way let's actually type next here so it actually walks through this and uh, what this next does is it's uh, it's it's uh, it's going to uh, you know it returns the next item from this iterator that's what the next is. I'm I'm trying to I'm as you can tell I'm struggling to find words right now. But uh, the next is it returns the next item from this iterator. Okay. And now we don't want this entire uh, folder name because the ID itself, sorry, the ID itself is supposed to be the folder name, the subfolder name. So let's actually take the second item in our uh, list that it actually creates. Without this, it actually creates a tuple. Okay, without this, it actually creates a tuple where the first entry is stage one underscore test. This is the first entry in the tuple. The second entry is going to be the uh, the subfolder list. Okay, the list of the subfolders. Okay, so all I'm telling here is, okay, uh, I want this list of the subfolders. Okay, again, experiment. This could be uh, uh, confusing if you have never done this before, but... Uh, Please uh, run the code until this point, look at the report, and then understand exactly what it's doing if you don't know exactly uh, what I'm doing. I mean, if what I'm doing doesn't make sense. Okay, let's similarly walk through the test folder. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste, and this is going to be my test. Okay, so I just did uh, 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 got all the training folder names and a list of all the test folder names. Let's uh, move this up. It doesn't matter where it is, but I just want to get a good view of uh, what we are doing down here. Okay, so now that we did that, well, what what do we need to do now? Let's actually get all the images, read all the images, and uh, resize them. Okay, so now. Before we can do that, let's actually create an empty array. Well, in fact, let's create an array of the same dimension as the input images. Okay. So if we read image number one, I want to create an empty array uh, that has all zeros. And then as I read each image, I'm going to update this empty array with uh, the new uh, numbers. So for that, I'm going to just use x underscore train. Okay. 
and fill this with zeros we have done this again in a couple of uh, uh, tutorials ago on a different data set so fill this with zeros oh np dot zeros it's yelling at me because we are not importing uh, numpy as np okay so np dot zeros so we should be good uh, right now and then how big is uh, uh, you know our array supposed to be whatever the length of my train ids is okay uh, look at the length over there so that's the uh, uh, dimension number one and then image height and image width and image uh, total number of channels right so image underscore height okay 128 okay by 128 image underscore width and image underscore number of channels okay so create an empty folder uh, or sorry an empty array of this much length and height and width right there and then total number of channels right there and then these need to be uh, let's say eight okay unsigned integer eight and let's do pretty much the same for y train except my training images for y just a second equals to let's do all the way up to here and y is again our dependent variable right x is this independent variables so y is what we are trying to predict okay so this is coming from my training images and y is what we are trying to predict and here this is just one and it's a type of boolean is this yes or no okay so my data type here is going to be uh, boolean np dot boolean okay i think that's good over there okay so now we are good to go through each of this instead of writing the code let me write the code and explain it okay so you can pause it and look at it and you can uh, type it yourself so let me pause the video for a second and then uh, finish this typing and then i'll continue that in a second okay okay there you go this is this is a this is quite a bit you know so i urge you to slowly look at you know every line uh, first of all i've added the a couple other libraries uh, we're not using this sys so i can delete this for now but uh, also random but uh, i added the imread and imshow so we can actually uh, why is it uh, uh, show uh, imported not used that's okay uh, let's actually look at the part that I just added here okay so first of all again just to quickly uh, we defined X train and Y train uh, here in fact let's go ahead and run up to this point so you can see how it looks like and that we are under the variable Explorer so up to this point uh, it's a bit slow for some reason okay there you go so if you look at this x train and y train x train is uh, the uh, you know unsigned integer 8 of size 670 128 128 by 3 okay uh, why is it 670 again we probably have 670 subfolders here there you go 670 this is not nothing but in our training i have 670 images okay that's exactly what this is uh, that's why we looked at the length of how many training ids we have so that's what it created and 128 by 128 by 3 okay so that's the dimension of x train y train is again exactly 670 except it's 128 by 128 by 1 and this is type boolean okay so there you go so that part and now we actually said okay before it enters this for loop just print out resize training images and masks part so we know that okay it started that part now looking uh, down here so now uh, by the way i added a tqdm this is a this is a uh, uh, it, it shows the progress bar during loop execution so if you actually this is a great uh, library i should say all you need to do is import tqdm you know from tqdm import tqdm and uh, as the for loop is going it actually shows a progress bar so as the images are being resized we can actually look at that so that's what that part actually does okay 
and then we are going through uh, in, uh, using the enumerate function to go look at the train IDs, okay? And uh, then we are actually defining the path as our training path, which is nothing but stage one underscore train plus the ID, which is again, nothing but the path to the image. So in this example, this is stage one underscore train and that folder, okay? So now we are entering that folder, okay? Once we are inside this folder, what do you want to do? Well, I'm defining my image as uh, IMG using imread to go to this path plus images subfolder, right? Remember, under in this path, I have images subfolder. Within images, I have a PNG file, okay? That's exactly what I'm doing here. Within image images, okay, uh, look at the PNG file, okay? So that's my image here. And then resize that image, okay, to 128 by 128, my image height and my image width, okay? And uh, then we went down to uh, X underscore train, okay, which is nothing but this one, or empty uh, uh, array over there, and fill that with uh, uh, values from image. So that's all this is actually doing, okay? So take this and fill every entry with the values that are coming uh, from my IMG over there. Again, uh, it took uh, a while for me to look at this and I also stole some of the code from online where others have implemented this, various people implemented this in different ways, but this seemed to be a very logical way for me. So I just copied uh, this and I'm trying to explain that to you right now, okay? And my mask is very similar, okay? My mask is nothing but uh, np.0s 128 by 128 by one of the type Boolean. And for my mask file in next os.walk, so now within this path, instead of images folder, I'm actually looking at the folder called masks, okay? That's what this is. And then go through each image in the masks uh, folder, okay? And, uh, uh, and, and, and we are actually expanding the dimension of the array by adding new axes here, okay? And uh, all of these additional steps, you know, uh, where we are actually expanding this and we are actually looking between uh, the maximum of mask and this mask underscore, Okay, values is because we are iterating through each image in this subfolder. We are iterating through each image, okay? And we are actually uh, taking, at a given pixel, we are taking the maximum value. So for example, at that pixel, in this image, that value is zero, there is nothing. But then in this image, there is a cell, so that value would be, I don't know, one, for example, okay? So at every pixel, look at the maximum value and use that value and create a mask. So this part of the code is nothing but, okay, we have a whole bunch of images, go through each image and create a training image called Y underscore train, where every pixel is either zero or one. If it is one, that means there is a cell uh, right over there, okay? So again, please go ahead and write the code, execute this part of the code and try to understand exactly what's going on. Okay, the steps here is again that uh, we are we are walking through each subfolder within our stage one train, and inside each subfolder we are opening up images folder and then copying this image and resizing it. That's all it is. Okay, reading that image and resizing that image to 128 by 128. That's pretty much it. And then opening each of these images under masks, okay? And uh, taking the maximum pixel value at each pixel location from, uh, from those masks. That's this part. I know I confused many of you, but again, run this code until this point and then see if that kind of makes sense, okay? And uh, I've also ha uh, written, uh, you know, uh, code for the same thing. We have to do it for test images, right? This is for training images. Now let's do the same for test images. And then uh, for that, again, let me pause the video, copy and paste, you know, or type it and then uh, continue.
Okay, there you go. So for test images, there is no masks, right? It's only test images. So it's only the first part up there until that point. So uh, for test images, go through the path again, look inside images, and then uh, and then resize them into 128 by 128 over there, and then finally print done. That's it. So hopefully our data should be uh, uh, ready. Now, just a sanity check so we can see if the images look good. So let's go ahead and uh, plot a couple of images. So let's actually do, uh, you know, uh, let's say, I'm, I'm thinking how to do this. Well, uh, let's generate a uh, random number and then uh, 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 let's use that to pick uh, our training images. So let's just say my lowercase x or uh, image x is uh, nothing but uh, using random. Let's uh, use a random integer and uh, generate a random integer between 0 to how many number of IDs do we have? 670, I believe, right? So instead of typing 670, we can just type length of train underscore, what do we call this, IDs, right? So it generates a random number. So basically pick, I don't know, image number 200 or something, right? So we just uh, generate a random number and then we can just say im show uh, which image. So let's actually do x underscore train and uh, our image underscore x is the number okay so i think that should be fine m show and then let's do plot dot show so we can look at this image let's also look at uh, the y train right so m show okay let's just do y train and which image image I M A G image underscore X. Oops, sorry. Image underscore X. And then let's just go ahead and show this. Okay, so this should be fine. Let's go ahead and run this code now until this point. And it may take a while to uh, resize. You see this part as it's showing the progress bar, that's actually coming from our uh, TQDM library. Okay. Okay, so there you go. So we randomly got uh, an image and corresponding mask where, again, this is a mask where all of those individual images are put together. So this is one combined mask. In fact, our life would have been much easier in writing this part of this code if we had like an image like this to begin with. One mask image where everything is in one, you know, on, on uh, one image rather than a bunch of images spread around. So it looks like we are all ready to go to the next level. Again, if you look at the X test, now we have 128 by 128 by three, X train is 670, 128, 128, three. And uh, the values are all uh, uh, unsigned integers. And if you remember, the first thing that we have done as part of our model is to convert these integers into floating points because that's what the, the uh, Keras layers convolutional 2D expects. So we converted those and everything seems to be okay. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's go ahead and run this entire thing actually. Uh, and uh, actually before, uh, oh, by the way, we have to change this model.fit right here. So we, I mean, we didn't call this X and Y. In fact, we called these uh, X, where is it? We call these uh, X test and Y test, I believe. So let's go ahead and update uh, update our uh, uh, code to reflect that. Okay. So let's, uh, where is it? Go down and instead of X, so this would be X train. Instead of Y, this would be Y train. Everything else look 
looks fine okay x train y train validation split and everything is okay uh, now the question is how do we test it let's go ahead and do that actually so once it's done what we'll have is a model now how do we actually uh, test it right away instead of uh, doing another implementation so let's uh, randomly pick again another image that is uh, you know a training image let's actually pick one from validation images let's pick one image from testing images and actually test it on all three of these so again let me pause the code so i can copy and paste it so i uh, and then we can we can uh, continue from there so let's go ahead and do this and first of all we need to generate a random number between 0 and x train 670 and then randomly pick an image just like we have done earlier and let's also do the same for the validation and uh, training so let me pause this write the code and then continue so there you go here is the code all i'm trying to do here is okay some uh, training images validation images test images and at this point an image after you know our our model fit every pixel has a probability value okay it's not just zero and one it's not a thresholded uh, image right so every pixel has a value between zero to one now i'm applying a threshold by saying okay anything that's above 0 0.5 okay convert that into uh, uh, into a one okay i mean it's basically making this binary just my predict train underscore t is nothing but my actual predicted image where every pixel is greater than 0 0.5 okay same with validation and testing and then we are uh, randomly selecting uh, a couple of images to uh, to display on the screen from uh, training and the test images okay so that's that's our entire code uh, and one thing I forgot to add is uh, a random number because there is a, a, you know, in the in the background, it actually uses uh, random seeds. So typically it is pretty customary to actually define something like, okay, my seed is, for example, let's say my seed is 42, okay? And np.random.seed uh, equals to my seed so what this does is it actually key makes sure that no matter how many times we run this we are consistently getting the same result otherwise in the background it actually uses a random seed so every time the seed changes every time the result slightly changes I'm not saying that's wrong but while you're actually building this you know it it makes sense for you to troubleshoot when things are not changing that's why it's uh, it's a good idea to define a uh, a, a uh, seed before beforehand so there you go so we have all of our libraries we have our random seed we have uh, defined our image width height and number of channels we are reading the images resizing the images again this part is completely depends on how your data is structured so don't pay too much attention to any of these details uh, this works on only on this folder structure and then we actually picked uh, we I can delete this part we, we p randomly picked an image just to make sure it looks okay and this is where we build the model this is the core meat of this entire tutorial and uh, then we have some callbacks here uh, like early stopping tensorboard and finally we are making some predictions obviously and uh, looking at uh, some random couple of random images and showing them on the screen so we can see how well the model actually performed so in the next tutorial let's actually run this code and uh, see how the results look like and again i'm not running that in this in this tutorial because i want to switch my computers to a workstation where i have gpu so it actually finishes in a decent amount of time and not on my laptop where it takes almost uh, uh, a few hours you know when it comes to training so please like this uh, uh, video if you like it and subscribe to my channel keeps me encouraged to create more content thank you